Welcome to the stem.t4l coding kit. The Tinker license that you've got means you can evaluate this tool as a potential teaching and learning resource for your school. The best way, of course, to evaluate is to make sure that students are using it and really getting the most value out of it. But step number one for you is, of course, create your first class and add students. There's a number of ways that you can add students to Tinker, so let's have a look at them. Right now, I'm on the, my welcome dashboard as a teacher. Top left hand corner, you can see is my avatar. Um, I've changed my avatar already and you can click on your avatar and edit the details to update what you want students to see. I even call myself Mr. D because that's what my kids call me as opposed to how my name first appeared. At the top of the screen, you can see three classes that I've already created. And there is a fourth. The more classes you have to manage, you'll just see the button here that says show all. So let's create a new class so you can see the steps and the options that are available. Up the top, click the add class button. And there are now two ways to create a class. If you are a Google Classroom user and you use your at education, Dot nsw .gov .au email address to manage your Google Classroom, um, you can use the Google Classroom setup to populate your classes. Most of you have used your at DET email address to create a Tinker account. So if you want to use your Google Classroom, please send me an email. Um, just respond to the email with this link in it and I will change your um, account details to use your, um, so you've got Google Classroom functionality. However, most of you have used your at DET email address. Just click set up class manually. All right, I've already given my class a name and down the bottom here, I can choose a grade. Name, grade, let's click next. There's now three ways that students can join your class that you have set up. Uh, let's have a look at all three and you decide which one you want to choose. The first way is you could share a class code. So if you click on class code and then click next, then students then need to go themselves to their own Tinker account. They will need to have created the account sign in and click on their avatar, which is top left hand corner, and then click join a class. They will then input this code into their own account. Step number three is insert the code. The second method that students that you can use to bring students into your teacher dashboard is through adding students via email. So if I click on that and click next, I had now got the opportunity to type in individual email addresses and it gives me six, but I could add, if I've got a class of 30, then I would need to add another 24 rows and click the add button. You might do this, for example, and pop that in there and ask students themselves to come up to the, the front of the classroom where you're using this and they can each enter their own email address, one email per um, per row and then click the finish button. So that's another method. But once again, students have to have their own Tinker account that they have created using their school email address in order for this method to work. Let's go back and have a look at the last method. You would use this method if students didn't create um, a Tinker account and haven't used their own email address. So let's see what that looks like. You now create their accounts for them with um, usernames and passwords that are generated. So if I want, uh, again, 30 students, and let's say I'm at Mayfield West Public School, um, I might use that as the prefix. That might be the start of all of their usernames. And I might go uh, student and that might be the start of their username. When I hit the generate button, then Tinker actually creates uh, the unique usernames for me and it creates the passwords for me. So this is then what 
the students would do. Um, you can then allocate the first name and last name of the students in your class. Um, and then students would record this perhaps in their diary. They might record this in the cover of um, their maths book, for example, uh, so that they've got a record. You would do this if you didn't want students to use their own emails to set up their account. All right, so that's the three ways that you could create a class. Success. Once you've created the class, then you'll need to assign your first course to them. So let's go back to courses over here on the left hand side. When you're looking for a course to give your class that you have now created, have a look at the year level that it's appropriate for. So pre-reader course collection is uh, from kindy to grade two. Programming 101, I highly recommend for grades three to five. It's the, um, you can see that there are six lessons with 47 activities to get them started with the basics of block-based coding. If you're in high school and you are keen for students to begin to use text-based coding, then have a look for courses on HTML, Java, or Python. If you have hardware in your school for example, like the microbit, then click on the hardware button to find microbit lessons or Lego we do lessons that you can give to your students to work with. I'm going to go back to block based coding and assign programming 100 to my class. I'm going to assign it to this class here and hit the assign button. Well done, you've now successfully assigned a course. When students log in, they will see that this course is available to them and they can either begin to work with you, with each other, or independently through the activities and you'll be able to monitor their progress through the grade book here at the top. You'll see which students have completed which courses. The other way that you can monitor their progress, of course, is through the projects tab. As students build projects, you can see the projects that they are working on in this space. You now know enough to get started and get your students underway using Tinker. As usual, with all of our stem.t4l activities, please join us in either the private Facebook group, search stem.t4l, or in the Department of Education Yama community. Again, search stem.t4l. There are other educators waiting to share your STEM journey and who knows what inspiration and support you'll find in those online places.